watch it guys you need to back up your data today i'm going to show you how to back up your data on your nas now a lot of people seem to think that their nas is a backup and it's not you need to back up your nas and i'm going to show you how to do it today so we've got a western digital elements 12 terabyte drive here now this comes with its own power adapter and it also comes with this extra adapter here if you live in another country uh, we've got a user manual here and also we've got the usb 3.0 cable with its own uh, proprietary connector on the end here and we also have the actual unit itself which has 12 terabytes in here so this should have plenty of storage on here for backing up my nas now you can see here the connector power button and our power input here and a kensit and lock on the back there is no usb inputs on this one so basically it's a pretty straightforward a backup solution which we can plug into our NAS and this will help us back up our NAS and we can always restore our NAS back to the way it was by using this method. So we're going to be using hyper backup and uh, I've got all the cables plugged in. Just need to plug this into the front of the NAS here. So I'll just quickly plug this in and then we should be good enough to go. Now I'm going to set this up in our NAS. I'll show you how to do this, but this is what the end result is here. Before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, click on this one and then you can uh, see we'll bit the buy now page, hit the buy now button, put in my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order to get a juicy discount. Once you click apply, it will be reduced down to $16.41. Submit your order and then activate your version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro. Okay, so let's head over to the main menu of our NAS. So we're going to go into the desktop here, into this PC, and you can see network here. So I'm going to click on network, and you should see your NAS here. So I'm going to click on this one here. And this will open up the main uh, desktop here of the NAS. So first off, what we're going to need to do is prep our USB drive here. So let's first go into our control panel here and we should now see our external devices so inside this menu here look for external devices and then click on this and you should see the usb disk one partition one here and it's basically our usb share it's already set for uh, ntfs so i'm going to leave that as is but if you wanted to use another type of file system you can do so inside your settings here you can give this permissions to who you want so for instance i would give this permissions to uh, read and write depending on what you want to do here so set this up how you like it for your users on here so you can have read only read and write no access and so on so set yours up how you like once we're here we're going to go to format here if you need to format your usb drive you can click on this here and you can format it to whatever file system you like, ext4, or you've got FAT32, or whatever it is you want to format yours to. The entire disk can be formatted, and you can also partition it out depending on what you want to do here. But bear in mind, ext4 is for Linux, and FAT32 would be for both Windows and Mac. So if you need to access it from Windows and Mac, then maybe format it into that cyber format. So let's move on. You can see mine is set to NTFS. So I'm going to move on to the next step. So now we need to set up Hyper Backup. And this is going to be doing our backups for us. And we're on a Synology-based system here. But if you're on another version of NAS, then they'll have their own uh, software, which you can use here. So I'm going to go to the Package Center, and we're going to open up Hyper Backup. So let's go ahead and click on Install. We need to install it on the NAS itself. And once we've got this installed, it's only a quick install here. We can open it up and then configure it ready for our backup. So what this is going to do is back up our NAS to our external drive. It's not going to just back up the whole of all the data because obviously that would be too large if we filled our NAS up. So it's not going to back up all of that. It's just going to back up uh, the settings and volume and stuff like that so we can easily restore it if the NAS crashed or it got corrupted in some way or something like that we can recover very quickly so here we have the backup wizard and inside here we've got a bunch of different options available you've got the synology area the file server area and the cloud services so inside here 
we can remote to NAS. We've got local folder and USB for single version. We're going to be interested in the local folder and USB. But if you want to set this up for something else, you can do. There's other options available here if you wanted to put this into the cloud or something like that. But we're going to be using it obviously next to our NAS here as a backup. So we're going to be using the local folder and USB. So let's go ahead and click on this option here and then we can click next. Let's go next here and create a backup task. And you can see the option says email backups and it says office NAS underscore one. You can change this to whatever you like. I'm going to use USB share one in case you use another USB. We're going to call this USB share one and go next. You can give it a directory name if you want to. Also, what do you want to actually back up? Which volume uh, do you want to back up? And what parts of that volume do you want to back up? You can do it all, or you could just do small portions of it. So if you wanted to just do, say, for instance, your photos, you can do. I'm going to be backing up the whole of my uh, NAS here to my external drive. So I'm going to select all of these, and uh, you can just create filters as well and exclude certain stuff as well. Next, we've got the application back up here. This is so we can restore our NAS if something happened, and it will restore all of these uh, applications as well. So we're going to be doing all of these, but if you just wanted to do a few, uh, you can do, but I would advise you to do all of them. And that way, if you had a major issue with your NAS, you can uh, restore your NAS back to the way it was by having all of the backups uh, backed up and also having all the applications backed up and all your settings and everything else. It will just put it all back to exactly how it was. So you can see here Synology Photos. If you're backing up your photos, it would make sense to back up the Synology Photos as well. And that way you could restore them very quickly. And this would be your shared link settings and stuff like that and all your databases. These would all be backed up like your file station. You can see here, back up your settings, your favorites, your connection lists, your mount lists and your sharing and all that sort of good stuff. So it's important that we back up all of this. So next up, we've got our backup settings. These are the settings that we're choosing here and it's going to give this task a name. So I'm going to call this something else like probably local USB storage one. You can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call it something like this so it's more recognizable. And uh, from there, we have got some other settings. Now, you can enable the client uh, side encryption. Now, if you're going to be uploading this to the cloud, that's an essential piece of security that you would put in a password. And that means that any time you upload it to the cloud, if they got access to it, they won't be able to view it because they wouldn't have your password because it's all encrypted or they wouldn't have the decryption key to get into it. So if you're going to upload that to the cloud, I would advise you to set up the uh, client side encryption. If it's set next to your NAS, like this one is, then it's up to you whether you want to enable the encryption. I'm not going to, so I'm going to take this off. But also the daily settings here and the run at a certain time, you've got these here for set for whenever you like them to be set. I'm leaving these as default. Um, so check data and enable integrity for schedule. You can change this to whatever you like, but I'm going to leave those as is, uh, as to not disturb it too much. It, that will be good enough for what I need. So next, we're going to push next button. So let's go ahead and enable the backup rotation here. Now, the little information parts are on the next to the actual name here. You can hover over those and it will tell you exactly what they do. So with a number of backup versions reaching its set number, maximums, keeps, versions, and retention policies will be triggered by the following rules. You can set this up to how you like it. If you want loads and loads of backups, then by all means, you can set up different settings here. I'm just going to keep this pretty simple. I'm going to leave this on a custom and retention, but if you want to leave it on from the earliest version, you can do, but there's quite a few uh, backups here that it's going to keep. In fact, it's going to keep a maximum of 256 here of kept versions, which I don't really need. So I'm going to go in there and customize and set this up by clicking the settings button. And we can then go in here and set this up. So from the earliest one week, and we've got one month and one day and one hour. So you can delete these and set your own ones up to whatever you like here. So let me go ahead and remove these by clicking on the little crosses here. And then we can add our own custom ones in to suit our needs. So we can go down to the duration. And uh, you can set this up to one month or three months or whatever it is you want to set yours to. 
So I'll set this to three months and uh, version one, and we can go this to day, one day, and then click add. So duration, three months, uh, versions, intervals, one day. And then you can set this up to, uh, for instance, say one day. And we can also go on to the uh, right hand side here and click on this one here where we can change this to one hour and then click add. So there we go. We've got our settings. We can click OK here and you can see these have changed now. So basically we need to change the maximum number of kept versions. We don't want 256 because we're doing it over a three month period. So we can do, say, for instance, 90 or something like that. And that will be plenty for what I need because I don't always change or add data to that uh, NAS. So that will probably be plenty uh, of what we need here. Now, again, you can adjust yours to your liking and your needs and uh, read up about it. And it's pretty straightforward. So we've got eight weeks earlier, six weeks earlier, four weeks and two weeks and so on. If we change this to Smart Recycle, we can see one year's earlier. There's going to be a hell of a lot of backups on there. And we don't really need that uh, for this sort of uh, backups that we've got here. So I'm going to leave this on custom. And once you're happy with it, click done. And uh, it will start loading up those settings for us. And we can amend these and change them if we want to a little bit later on. But we're just going to click done here and let this uh, finish off these settings for us. And then we can do our backup, start our backup. It's best to start it right away. And it does take a bit of time. There you go. Do you want to back up now? So basically, we're going to back up now. I'm going to say yes. You don't have to do it right now, but I'm going to. And click yes here. And it will go off and it will start preparing and initialize the disk and get everything right for us. And then start backing up all of that data. Now, it does take a lot of time if you've got a lot of data. If you've hardly got anything, it won't take long at all. But there is quite a bit of data on mine, and that's going to take a bit of time. But we can also restore from this as well. You can restore files, pull files out and back up data from there and you can check it all at a later date when it's all completed. Unfortunately, I haven't got that amount of time to wait for it to finish to show you the end result. Otherwise, I would do. But basically, that is how you can back up your NAS. It's super important to back up your NAS. Your NAS is not a backup. You need to back it up. And this is basically how you can do it on the Synology uh, NAS using the Hyper Backup uh, program, which is in there. Uh, library so pretty straightforward and easy to do now if you haven't backed up your NAS already then it's important to do so and you don't have to have a large um, storage device like I bought that is quite an expensive one but I have quite a bit of data you can buy smaller ones depending on how much data you have but other than that I think that's going to be about it for this video my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. A special shout out to Ron Hicks, Casso Time, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, PC Repair Tech, Albert Euston, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony One. I shall catch you in the next video. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall see you again real soon. Bye for now.